Woke up this morning, started thinking about training, and all I could think about was lunges, lunges, lunges. Let's just get through everything I, I need to do to get to the lunges, um, so I can get to the to the stuff that really matters. Um, so open up with the squat. My hip now feels so good now that I don't really need to do anything else to warm up for the for the squat. Start off with the squat, and I realized real quick that I am gonna have a bad day today because the volume that I did yesterday, the three sets of, you know, I did 12, 10, and, and eight reps with 140 kilos. It's taken a toll. Uh, when you do volume like this, you're gonna get dumps, you're gonna get tightness, you're gonna get all that kind of metabolic stuff happening within the tissue that happens with high reps. Um, and all that stuff kind of binds tissues, um, makes you tight, um, and basically forces you to either deload or completely rest. Um, with me, you know, I'm gonna, squat, I'm gonna squat every day. So I basically came in today and I was like, all right, the body's not gonna give me everything I want it, so I'm gonna just do exactly what it can do. So I knew quite from the bar that I'm going to have a poor mobility day. And when I have a poor mobility day, I can't get into the positions that I want to and I can't push heavyweight or high reps. So it's one of those days that I just come in and take the box off. Um, I ended up doing a whole bunch of reps with you know 60 kilos, 100 kilos, whatever. I got to 180 kilos for one, but that was a slow descent. And when I see a slow descent, when I feel I'm slowly descending into the rep, I know that I'm just feeling tippy-toeing my way around the rep because I'm not really sure what the body's capable of. I never understood those dudes that are just like bombing themselves into the reps. Like, God damn, you must have a lot of confidence in your joints not to freaking just blow out. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I always try to, like, when I'm squatting, I'm always kind of like trying to decelerate the weight um, to a point. And then maybe I'll kind of like accelerate a little bit just before the bounce at the bottom just to get a bit more kind of like... Um, you know, rebound, uh, a bit more kind of a stretch reflex, but to completely bomb from the top down, like, whoa, man, I've seen a couple of dudes in my time squatting big ass weight like that, and I just, I, it just makes me nervous, man, it makes me nervous for the knees and all of that, I know I always preach about ATG squats and all of that, but damn, man, like, just don't dive, basically, um, you know, Klokov talks about, you know, uh, uh, what do they call it, tempo squats, you know, uh, Klokov always talks about tempo squats. That those are the best builders. The the, the eccentric portion of, of, of the lift really taxes you more than than the concentric because they are they've done research on this. The, the 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 eccentric portion we are stronger eccentrically, if that's a word, than concentrically. So your body has the ability to handle more weight while getting longer than it is able to kind of overcome weight and get shorter. But anyway, that that's that's why. Um, you know, every time I see myself kind of slow down with the descent, I know that um, I'm not feeling the sharpest. Um, so 160 here, um, that kind of moved all right. I actually thought 160 was going to be the top set today. Um, but anyway, that kind of moved all right. And I thought, the hell with it, man. Let's just pull 180 on and see how it goes. I was quite nervous about it um, just because of the positioning aspect of it. But then again, like, you know, I thought to myself, every time I put a lot of weight on my back, even even on a, on a poor mobility day, just the sheer weight on the shoulders kind of pushes the ankles into position, pushes the hips into position. But that's not what you want, right? You don't want passive, um, you want active range of motion. So here's 180. Let's see how this went. Nice. Yeah, I was feeling it here. I was feeling it. Um, after yesterday, today was not going to be good. I just didn't think of it last night. I thought I was going to build today. Um, so anyway, I, I took the weight off. Um, it was still kind of raining outside, so I just thought, look, I'm not going to go to do lunges. Uh, let's just buy some time and we, you know, do some bench pressing. So I en ended up doing bench pressing again. Worked up to a set of three, I think it was, with 100 kilos. Uh, my chest is sore. Uh, this is 48 hours after the, the last, the last uh, 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 bench session, which is the first bench session in two months. Um, so I'm still sore in the chest, still sore in the anterior deltoid, um, still sore in the tricep from, um, I guess, the bench press and also the JM press. Um, although, lots of discussions around that. Um, I thought I was doing a JM press with just a bit of an alteration with me flaring the elbows. But a lot of you guys have come out of um, on the comments and said, look, man, you're not doing the JM press at all, which I kind of thought initially. I was, but then you guys corrected me and said that, look, JM tucks his elbow in. And I thought, okay, no worries, I'll call it JM press with a, with a twist. And then one of you guys said to me, Do you just call it the guillotine press. This is the guillotine press. And I thought, nice, man, it's got a killer name as well. I never actually knew about the, the guillotine press. 
Uh, so anyway, the guillotine press is part of my repertoire now. Um, uh, it just feels a lot better than the JM press. The JM press is kind of like a skull, skull crusher in a, in, a, in a closed grip bench, um, but I don't like that. I don't. I don't like the how the elbow is kind of tucked in. Um, it's too much of a skull crusher to me. Whereas the guillotine is kind of kind of mimics more the bench press. I feel like there's more carry over there, but I don't know. That's just me. Uh, I think this is the 100 kilos times three. Um, I thought about doing this for one, then I thought, look, instead of just doing this for one and then 110 for one, let's just do 100 for set of three and call it the day there um, for, the, for, the, for the benching. And then after this, I ended up doing, I think it was, yeah, so five sets of 20 with the guillotine press. I did that. Um, and then by that time, the scars kind of cleared away. So that's, that's the, nice, looks all right. The scars cleared away, and then we went outside and I did some lunges, which was the whole point of today. I just I was just basically walking through the motions until I got to the good stuff. Because like I said yesterday, guys, like, man, the lunges, man, psh, that got me feeling real good. Really, really, really good. Uh, smashes the, the glute medius. Um, really, really hits the, the quads as well, which is kind of weird as well. Unil unilateral work, lower body work, really just, you know, hits the quad more for me for some reason. I know a lot of you guys have said Bulgarian split, spot, split squats as well uh, really destroys you um, in terms of uh, the quads. But that's that's the recipe for the future, man. Like, a lot of you guys have said you also have some knee pain, hip pain. Um, for me, I've always had hip pain with, with, with imbalances in the hip. Um, but, you know, one of you guys said to me, you've got knee pain. And I said, look, just start with the hips, man. The knee is, a, is a quite a simple joint. It's supposed to be a hinge joint um, predominantly. It's got a bit of a twist to it as well. Um, I don't know what you call that aspect, but predominantly it's a hinge joint. Um, so if usually, unless there's structural trouble there, usually, you know, you got to look below or above the knee um, to kind of take care of the knee pain. Um, so for this person, I just recommend, look, you know, I'm not a doc or anything, but uh, I would just look into the external and internal rotation of the hip. Just lie on your back, um, pick your knees up kind of 90 degrees, um, and then just kind of twist your leg in and out and see where you're at. You can look this up on, on, on Google, YouTube, and work out exactly what sort of degrees you're, you're after, but you can kind of eyeball it and know exactly where you're lacking, whether it's internal or external rotation. Um, I think lunging actually helps you with internal rotation because I, I actually have historically quite poor hip internal rotation and um, maybe that's why you know i have the things that i have but with, with the hip pain whatever but lunging seems to hit that abductor portion of the glute which is the glute medius um and it just sorts me out completely sorts me out so anytime you have knee pain just start with the hip make sure it's long and strong um and yeah i, I think we spend too much time doing you know two-legged exercises unilateral work is 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 is, is, is good like bilateral work is, is you know the powerhouse of a human movement like bilaterally you can lift a lot more than unilaterally um, so if you if you completely neglect unilateral work and just do bilateral squats and deadlifts you're leaving a lot to be desired for because um, I don't know uh, stabilization is very very important when it comes to strength um, it's not it's not just about having horsepower you got to be able to put that thing down to the floor and for me, I haven't been, been able to push into the bar with all my might for quite a long time. I've, I've spoken about this before. Like every time I load to like 90, 95, 100% of my max as I'm approaching that, I just feel lack of confidence in the joint. I feel like something's off, something grinds, something pinches. Those are some shitty feelings to have when you're trying to lift your maximum weight. You know, and because I'm not a paid athlete, because I'm not anybody other than just the average Joe in the gym and his garage, there's no point of pushing through those pain barriers. Like there's no metal on the line for me. So basically six months of tippy toeing around trying to work out exactly what I need to do, but love it, man. Love getting outside here and just addressing the glute mead. Um, it's hard work, man. This high red stuff, man. <laughs> I'm not a fan of it, man. Like usually my stuff is singles, doubles, and triples. And this is like, this is just, you're in a hurt locker for quite a while. Uh, but whatever, man, I'll do whatever I, uh, I can to improve my hip so I can freaking start moving this squat up, man. I'd love to hit 210, 220 in the next few months. Man, that, that's going to make me feel amazing, man. It's been a long time in the making. Um, so, yeah, try, try lunges. I, just, I keep harking on about it, but this is exactly what I feel. One day lunges, the next day GHD back raises, and I reckon you'll be on your merry way to um, 
you know, out of Snap City and into something something more positive. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I came back here and I thought, oh, let, let me do a couple of sets of pull-ups for the sake of balance of the upper body. You can't, I've learned my lesson, you can't just do, you know, pushing and not pulling. You got to be able to balance it. So I uh, ended up doing here three sets of 10 dead hang pull-ups. I'm quite impressed, man, that my upper body strength has maintained the way it has. I thought I was going to be a lot weaker. But here you go, man. I did a three sets of 10 dead hang, chin over the bar at the top. Um, as you can also see that I've changed my furniture around. Because the squat rack is the way it is, man, I can't actually uh, do pull-ups properly because the squat rack, well, I guess the roof is too low and I can't get my chin over the bar because I hit the beam above of the roof. So then I, you know, we decided to flick the, the, um, the squat rack around. Um, I've got limited space here, I understand, and it's not the most optimal, but I'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about it tonight and work out exactly how I'm going to go about setting up the, the, the garage because the floor is also uneven, so I'm trying to think about the floor. There's, there's lines in the concrete. I can't stick my head up through and do a pull-up. Oh, there's a whole bunch of things that are kind of conflicting in my head, but anyway, maybe tomorrow you'll see a whole new setup of the garage. I'll try and work it out tonight. And, uh, and yeah, that's it for today, guys. Um, peace out. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Laters.